Welcome to Frequency School. We're so, so, so happy you're here. My name is Jessica Molly, and I'm co-hosting tonight with uh, Jennifer Pascal, and we have the amazing guest speaker all the way from Australia, Mark Bentley, and um, we're just so happy you're here. And I'm just going to hop right in and and uh, go, well, I guess we have a few more people popping in, but um, but yeah, I've had my Healy for three years. Just wanted to share that, or going on three years. It'll be three years in September. So this is a really special moment to be here with you all um, because I've witnessed so many profound miracles in my life from using Healy. And uh, and we're just, we're happy that you've, you've, you're taking some of your precious time to be here with us. So um, tonight we are welcoming in Mark Bentley. And Mark Bentley is a Gene Keys ambassador all the way from Australia, like I said. And um, I'm just gonna go ahead and open up and ask Mark, what led you to Healy? How did you find Healy? Hey, Jessica. Well, thank you, first of all, for the warm welcome. And it's one of my things, I, one of the things I love so much is how we can jump on these calls and be able to see in the windows. That's why I love where it's not a webinar. We can actually see the faces of all of you here today. So just want to say thank you for everyone that's come along to, to play in the story. So, so Jessica, Healy, I've, I've been with Healy uh, for about four years, I think, when it first came to Australia. It's, it's quite rare that things come to Australia first. I, I'm from Perth in Western Australia, and, and Western Australia was often known back in the day as wait a while, WA, you know, wait a while, because all fashions, everything would take forever to get, get down to us. But Healy was one of the things that came to us first before it got out to America and the rest. So it was a crazy time, but uh, it was actually when, when Healy turned up, it was an old friend of mine, um, Adahia son, who is also deeply in the Gene Keys work. And we've been working together with the Gene Keys and lots of other projects. And she got reached out and got in touch. And when I went out and checked it out and had a look, and I saw that there was an I Ching database, which is what the, the Gene Keys stems from, it just straight away was a yes for me. It's it's a technology I knew was coming. And uh, yeah, it got me really excited. So so I, I said yes. And four years on, I still use it every day. I had it with the Eclipse on before this session with the exam acute frequencies to help make sure that the mind's ready to go with any questions. And yeah, it's been a fun ride. You just muted Jessica. So sorry. I was just saying that's that's a beautiful story. I love Arahia. Oh my gosh. She's I'm actually taking one of her courses right now, Human Design for Network Marketing. Recommend. I wasn't going to throw that out here, but hey, why not? Um, it's really a, an amazing, amazing course. Um, and I forgot to say one more thing. I'm so sorry, but I forgot to ask you all to just hold your questions until the end so that we can give our full attention to Mark and then give our full attention to your questions. But so yes, so Healy came into your life. And did it feel like an answered prayer in any way to you? You know how you know how somehow in the Healy, some people say in the Healy community that people are praying for the Healy without knowing that they're even praying for the Healy to come into their life. Yeah, did it feel like that. Uh, absolutely, and that's something often where we're working with the teams is you know there's nothing to push here. You don't need to sell the Healy. It's like the people will know when when you connect with the right people. They they know that what they're getting put in their hand is something special and. For me, for me, it really was a vision that I'd had for, I mean, I was into technology since I was about four years old. You know, I was helping my mother learn how to use a, an old computer with a cassette tape, you know, as a, as a four-year-old. And so for me, there's always been a deep connection with technology where I felt there was a resonance there. And as I got deeper into spirituality, consciousness, et cetera, I was always curious about why do I see so many you know, reflections in technology of the human condition. And I began to realize that we were essentially mimicking our human capacities in our technology. And as much as that can feel sometimes as it takes us away from our, our powers, what I began to find was it actually kind of brought the world and society closer. For example, with mobile telephones, you know, when you're on a mobile telephone, it's the closest thing to telepathy I think you can get short of telepathy. And before the 90s, you know, we, we didn't have that. You know, we, 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 we just kind of, and so the idea of telepathy was this far out crazy idea that most people would not be able to, to conceive. Yet now we live in a world where we're talking about before the call, 
our, on our mobile devices. We're getting text messages everywhere. We're getting, you know, it's like you really have to learn how to telepathically take care of your energy field, of yourself, right? So ironically, the very technology that feels like it's taking us away from our, our self is kind of showing us and teaching us how to handle the new world when we actually open up things like telepathy. So with that and being the passion for technology that I have, I kind of always felt that, and I'd, I'd worked a lot with scalar technology and a lot of these frequency technologies that are very expensive. They were very fancy machines. They took a lot of training and I was, I was looking forward to getting into that kind of work. But at the time, I just didn't have the money to, to get the machines. And so I had this dream that sooner or later, just like, you know, in the sci-fi, you know, like um, Star Trek, we're going to have a little frequency device that's going to be able to help support this whole process. So I had this vision. And so when Adahir reached out, I, I actually was not the biggest fan of network marketing at the time. In, in fact, I had a lot of trauma Same. from my early 20s. We were, I think a <laughs> yeah, lot of people I, I watching this. Yes, until this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, so that's where, for me, there was a lot of resistance. And I was like, okay, out of here, what do we got? You know? And then I thought, okay, but I love her so much and we work and I value her opinion on things so much that I said, okay, I'm coming along. Well, let's have a look. And again, when I saw what was on there, the, the gene keys made me pay attention when I saw the aging database, because I'd actually seen those frequencies elsewhere in the more expensive devices. And then when I really dropped into seeing what was on offer, you know, this frequency device that uses microcurrents, which our bodies are electric, like literally electric, you know, they're computers. We have this brain that sends these electrical signals and impulses. And when I saw how this device was working, I realized this is what I've been waiting for. And I thought it was going to be another five years, another 10 years until we finally saw it manifesting. So to see that it was already available was just mind blowing. And so that's, that's really where I just, yeah, jumped in. Yeah. Oh. Beautiful. And I'm sure many of you here have similar stories, or maybe you were like me and you were like, I have no idea what Healy is. But when I heard it and when I felt it resonate with my body, it was just, there was such truth there because I'm not a technology person. So that is really, I love hearing people's journeys with, with Healy. Um, and so that leads me to ask you the question, you know, what, or how did you, how did you become connected with gene keys? And honestly, what are gene keys for all of the new, then just tell us what, what gene keys are. Cause I'm really new to this too. So at, admitting that, um, just take it away. What are gene keys? How did you get connected? What drew your attention to the gene keys and anything else you want to share around the gene keys? Uh, I appreciate the question. And Jessica, I think it's such a beautiful thing. My, my favorite thing is working with people that are brand new to the work you know, and, and putting it, putting it into a way that we can kind of bring into our everyday life. Cause sometimes we approach these, these things like pe people can often approach the gene keys with the old perspective of other systems, like thinking that, oh, this is another form of astrology, or this is another form of human design. But the gene keys in itself is a very unique uh, way of moving through life. It, it's, it's a living transmission is what we call it. So when we talk about the gene keys, you know, most people will have experienced it as a profiling system that you can put in a link, you know, you put in your birth data and you get a, a profile that has a set of spheres and that have different themes. So for example, your life's work, you know, what are you here to do? What are you here to give to the world? And your uh, evolution sphere, for example, which is, you know, what is the challenge that will help grow your life's work and expand it into the world? And, but when we go beyond that, what we're really looking at is a map and a compass to our own genetic makeup that we discovered. So the gene keys comes from a system known as the I Ching. It's a Chinese auricular system, uh, body of wisdom that has been around for, you know, about, they say about 5,000 years since the first recorded history. And the legend goes that it was one of the mystics or the emperors were walking along the beach and saw this turtle shell, you know, a turtle on the beach. And on the back of the turtle shell saw these patterns and these fractals of geometry that suddenly accessed to a wide world of information. So this, this person on the beach then suddenly has access to, oh my God, there's these 64 different patterns of reality that are within our DNA and in a sense are the programming code of who we are. And so 
what we've discovered since then we just you know dna was discovered in in the um you know it was not that it was in the 50s or something where they finally discovered dna and and started looking at how is it built and how has it worked out and that's when we discovered that dna is a 64 bit program that there's you know these um 64 different codons in our dna that that decides what proteins and amino acids get made in our body which essentially generates everything in our experience our physical experience and so when we look at the gene keys which most all people also know it as this big chunky book mm -hmm. we discovered that it's the 64 keys to understanding these 64 codons of our dna so what that basically means is when you print out your profile you're looking at the sequences of contemplation that can unlock specifically your natural genius that is in your DNA. And, you know, this is what I see is, and so for me, I became an ambassador. I dedicated my life to this work because I realized that after spending a lifetime of trying to bring change, you know, I wanted to bring peace to the world. I wanted to bring alternative communities. I wanted to bring you know, alternative energy, alternative economics, so many things that I saw were solutions the world needed. My life experience showed me that trying to just go out there and, and push these solutions to the world, <clears throat> pardon me, wasn't, wasn't working. All I would get is this backlash. And I realized, ah, people are still in fear. And this really brings us to the heart of this conversation is that I realized that when people are in fear, their shadow nature is triggered. And through the Gene Keys work, what I discovered was that our shadow nature is nothing to be ashamed of. It's our protection mechanisms. It's the door guard of our heart that is trying to protect the sweet innocence that's within us, within the human spirit. And so these shadow frequencies, you know, like greed, et cetera, they're there for times of genuine danger when we need to take care of ourselves. And looking at the way the world with, you know, if you look at economics and marketing in, in around the planet, we use fear everywhere to sell. It's, it's a classic form of, of, of selling. You generate fear and then you sell a solution. And then if you look at you know TV, everything else, the news, they just do whatever provokes, like it gets those dopamine hits through fear. And so I started realizing we're living in a planet that has a field of fear constantly artificially being perpetrated into our into our awareness and as long as this is happening i can't communicate to the world it's very hard for them to hear solutions because they're so caught up in fear and needing to survive and with everything that i tried it came back to realizing all that's left is cultivating self-awareness and I, I decided that i would dedicate my life to supporting those around me and those that are drawn into my my world in the process of, of cultivating self-awareness because through self-awareness we can bring our collective gradually out of fear and then naturally when you're in your gift frequencies which when you look at your gene keys profile you'll see the shadow gift city these three keynotes of each key that are what we call the frequency band when you're in the gift frequency of your design of your dna and naturally expressing yourself then there is nothing to fix or change or learn or be. You just naturally do what you're here to do. It's your genius. It's your natural birthright. And really the, the biggest challenge we have, as cliche as it is, is we need to move out of fear into love. Mm -hmm. And that really <clears throat> brings me to why I'm such an advocate for the Gene Keys work is it gives us a framework that helps hold us without telling us who we're supposed to be how we're supposed to perceive things, but rather it gives us a framework that kind of holds us gently while we get to recalibrate how we perceive our reality and, and change the way we approach it. So, so that's the gene keys in a nutshell for me. Beautiful. And I love how it links back to the tortoise or the turtle tortoise. Um, I think that, yes, they may be the same thing. No, just kidding. I know that some people, that's another conversation, but, um, but I love that because it's, it's in so many, you know, it's rooted everywhere. The turtle is seen in so many different, um, spiritual paths. And I, I love, I did not know that. And, uh, mm. the we're just so articulate. Thank you for your beautiful, um, perspective on, on how you see life. And, and thank you for reminding us again of how much fear is, you know, being 
forced in our faces or these things to provoke us and to return to ourselves. Um, and to, and gosh, I know that ever since I've been living out more of my gene keys and embodying even, you know, more of my human design, it is liberating. It is, it's, it, it, it's, um, it really illuminates the path and it really makes you feel confident and acting how you want to act and showing up how you want to act without having guilt. Like, I feel like a lot of guilt mm -hmm. has shed from who I am, um, since I've, I've learned about the gene keys, which leads me to my next question, because I really want to be mindful of our time and your time. Um, and that is how does working with gene keys and Healy help to shift the way we perceive our reality. Mm. And please feel so free is, to go any, in any direction that you want to go. You don't have to answer these questions. Do whatever, whatever feels best for you. But yes. No, yeah. absolutely, Jessica. You, you, I mean, this, this is, this is the heart of everything that we're here to talk about today and something that I'm deeply passionate about sharing. And it, because again, if we take the story that I was just sharing about the gene keys and, and how it can support us in shifting our, our perspective of reality, which in turn shape shifts the way we generate reality and what reality we live with, then one of the challenges that I came up against when I've been doing this gene keys work for over 10 years is it would be hard to get people to actually slow down enough to embody the process of contemplation. The gene keys have the actual way that the gene keys works is not just by looking at your profile once and going, Oh, great. That's me. That that's a party trick. And that's a party trick. That's a lot of fun. You know, I can sit with anybody, open their profile and blow their minds away, but that in itself won't change their life. It might be a, a, a moment where a shift happens, but in order to use this work to truly change the way we move through reality and how we co-create reality, we need to bring it into a, a form of embodiment, which happens through the art of contemplation, which contemplation is, is the middle pathway of enlightenment in one way you could say. You know, there's concentration and then there's meditation. Concentration is like yoga, it's to yoke, it's to, to try and achieve this liberation. And then you have meditation, which is to just sit back and do nothing. Contemplation is the middle ground where you take that meditative style of being into everyday life, where you actually don't stop what you're doing, but you also don't push. You just contemplate your gene keys, you know, through your day-to-day -day life. You know, it's at work in the conflicts that you might be having or the challenges that are turning up, or it's in your relationships with the conflict that's happening there or wherever things are happening, where discomfort or magic is happening. That's, where we contemplate the gene keys and that's where the real work happens. But in order to do that, we do have to cultivate a certain kind of presence and, and to be here. If we're in constant fear, you know, like a lot of us have ADHD D type symptoms and, you know, these days it's become ridiculously, you know, common around the world. And I think it's a byproduct of the kind of chaos that's ensuing through this transformative time. And so one of the reasons that I kind of chose this, this Healy and said yes to it and, and put my name next to it and my reputation on it was because what I began to find is that using the Healy was incredibly supportive of reducing my anxiety and the anxiety of others in the way they are moving in their day-to-day -day lives. It, with the microcurrents, can help support reducing inflammation which, I mean, inflammation is so much of our dramas in life between our clarity of thought, you know, the cloudy, cloudy head and, you know, energy levels, and all these different things. What I found was by using the Healy, it was like having a kinesiologist in my pocket. It meant that instead of going to my kinesiologist once a month, I was able to, in between sessions, actually look after my own energy field, my own, you know, bioenergetics. And through that, I noticed how using the Healy together with the gene keys would help me kind of the, the Healy would help me get in the right head state. So for example, if I've just had a, um, you know, some kind of conflict with my family or a partner or somebody that triggered me, then it, in the middle of that trigger, it can be hard to ground. It can be hard to kind of get centered. So I would then, you know, maybe put the ear clips on. I know in USA, the ear clips don't come with the Healy. You have to kind of hunt them down. Well worth hunting. 
Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> really want a pair of those. Yeah. They're, they're, they're worth getting third party where you can find them, but you can also put the sticky pads on, on, um, yeah, just behind the ears here. We'll show you there, but putting on that and then putting mental balance acute. That's, that's a program that I often use and I recommend to all of my clients who have a Healy and anyone that I know that has it, that when those moments happen, put that on. It's like 20 minutes, I think. Have you know, a big glass of water, take a 20 minutes aside, put the mental balance on and just let it do its thing. And you know, it's that strange feeling, you can swaying feeling you might feel a little bit. It almost feels like the left, right brain are rebalancing, the motions are rebalancing. And then I always notice at the end of that, and sometimes I might do it a second round if I find it a bit more resistant. But by the end of that process, I find myself suddenly being a lot more present, a lot more in the here and now, and able to actually contemplate what just happened. Am I actually in danger right now? That's the first question I check. Am I, am I losing my house? No. Is someone about to stab me? No. Okay. So where's the danger? It's like, oh, well, they, they, they really pissed me off. Pardon my expression. And it's like, okay, but am I in danger? No, it's uncomfortable. And so by using the Healy would help me bring more awareness to the situation so that I could then put my gene keys work into place. So I could use that framework more effectively. So that's how I found the two kind of really worked well together and are super supportive for my clients and myself. I just, I love that. And wow, has my perspective shifted like of my own emotions i i can't even the way the healy i mean i've been using it for almost three it'll be three years um in october is when i actually use the healy i bought the healy for my husband as a birthday gift on the autumn equinox and it sat in a box for a month i cannot believe it but i just look at because i was going to give it to him um but i i mean i'm and i'm sure many of you can relate to this like we ju you just shift so much in the most beautiful way from working with the Healy and being able to watch your emotions and, and watch how you interact with people um, and, and have this clarity, these, these deep pivotal moments of clarity within. I mean, that is, that is the work that we are here to do to help generate a new earth and also peace, you know, when we know ourselves that well. Mm. So this is just, it's so beautiful what you're sharing, um, Mark. Mm. And, and this, I'm going to, now hop on over to let Jennifer ask a few more questions. Uh, so we keep things lively and interesting here. You don't get bored of just Beautiful. listening to me. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, so Jen, take it away. Thanks, yes. Thank you. Okay. So Mark, I think you covered a lot of this already, but I'm going to ask again, because we talked and the flyer you talked, we talked about um, shifting our perception and moving towards creative liberation. So I'd love for you to mm talk into that. And also just in sake of time, I'm just going to ask both questions together. Um, how do you perceive the changes the world is going through, which you did touch upon and how Healy and Gene Keys can help us thrive in these truly transformative wild times? <laughs> mm, beautiful, Jennifer. And I mean, I think I'll start with you know, something Jose Aguayas, he was the man who was the, the wild professor behind getting the date of uh, 2012 and the Mayan calendar into content and public awareness. Uh, Jose Aguayas was also the one who brought the, um, in 1987, the, uh, my, my mind's gone blank, but he brought the whole world together back in the day before there was all of the emails, et cetera, <clears throat> around bringing, you know, coherence to the planet. And interestingly enough, this is for those that know the dream spell, the 13 moon calendar work. It's something that I did before that led me to the gene keys. It all came through at the same time in the same year to Jose Aguayas and Ra Uru Hu. All this information was kind of downloaded. Mm -hmm. And so what we began to see was, you know, sorry, what, what Jose Aguayas said and part of his teachings, which I, I, I live by, is that we are moving through a transformational time. We are moving through an old energy, which you could almost put a formula together that our energy factored by time. So the way we combine our energy with our time equals money and money being a very materialistic manifestation of things. And so he would say that we have just spent all this period, this great cycle, 
with this frequency of our energy factor by time equals money. Now, we are moving and we are going through the transformative period right now where we are moving from time is money to energy factored by time equals art. And so time is art. And this to me makes a lot of sense from a logical kind of mathematical perspective when you consider the concept of art as any form of creative expression from the heart that is inspired from the heart, not from the mind. The mind is in service to the heart. In time is money, the mind is leading. In time is heart, when time is art, the heart is leading. And so this is where I also feel we talk about the rise of the feminine. It's this rise of this capacity for us to be more receptive, to receive from our higher divine self, the kind of creative inspiration, you know, inspiration itself. When we talk about creative liberation, inspiration, you know, is to breathe in spirit, is to breathe our spirit through fully. And so what I see this transformation we're going through right now is the world is having the old structures that have supported this concept of time is money is breaking down. All the places we're seeing centralized power is falling apart. And we're moving into a process of decentralizing, of passing that responsibility out. And I feel like network marketing is actually a beautiful business model to empower that where each of us can take responsibility ourselves rather than just one CEO or boss at the top. And so we're seeing this transformation happen. <clears throat> and in this transformation, you know, where in order for the humanity to thrive going forwards and to thrive within our own reality, we need to be able to come back and reconnect to our own creativity, to our imaginations, to realize that your imagination is not a fluffy tool, a fluffy concept. It's an actual tool. Your imagination is the most powerful tool that you have in your toolbox for creating and co-creating reality. And so in that, those some of you may have experienced blockchain, this concept of cryptocurrencies and all these things that's kind of taken the noise. And, and I was at a Healy conference in Vietnam uh, in January where I got to meet the you know, Marcus Schmeker, but also the um, Christian Halper, the, the billionaire money behind partner in, in Healy. And... When I heard him get on stage and share about his vision for healing and why he is there, I literally was sobbing. You can ask out of here. I, I was crying. And it was because for me, my, I, I felt in my heart, finally, someone is actually seeing the bigger picture of how all these pieces are coming together where I've been trying to scream at the world, but it was falling on deaf ears, understandably, because it's very out there. And he was sharing about blockchain. and. One of the things, so if you put all the noise of crypto and if all this kind of stuff you hear, underneath it is a new technology that is empowering decentralization. It is empowering individuals to be able to play their role within a collective field and we can work together. And so what we're seeing is that everything is moving towards rechanging how we create. And what I then saw was the blockchain, in a sense, this new technology is mimicking in some ways like the information field that our healies connect to, that works with, that when we create, you know, people talk about the, the world being a simulation, right, and simulation theory. And a lot of people get a bit icky about that because they think it means you're in an, a computer of some other civilization. But if you think about this simulation concept, that we live in a simulation of consciousness itself, that God, G-O-D, is the galactic ordering dynamic that is coordinating the simulation. And we are all an aspect of it in the way we bring it, that each of us has a power to, in a sense, vote on what reality will manifest as in each moment. And so it is by each of us empowering and believing in ourselves and, and connecting to our creator you know, power that comes from being in our gift. When we're in fear, we shut off the bandwidth to our higher self because the body needs to just survive. There's no time for higher self. So, yep, great. Love it. I've got a car coming at me at a thousand miles an hour. There's no point listening to my conscious guidance when I just need to jump. Right. So that's what fear is here for. It cuts off that, that connection temporarily. And so this is where, you know, tools like human design, gene keys and, and Healy are, you know, three of my most, I would say the most efficient and dogma-free tools 
to support that process of becoming an, of an empowered creator. And this comes into the start of that question, Jennifer, that in the end, once, if we look at that, that each of us has a contribution and we talked a little bit about the Abraham Hicks channelings and Abraham Hicks, you know, would say that one conscious creator, you know, that's in the vortex has more impact on the world than I can't remember. It's like thousands or something of, of those that are not. And so the more of us that can wake up to our full empowerment of who we are and, and trust in the flow of what we have to offer to the world, then we get to vote consciously, creatively with our imagination because you know, that way we allow our imagination to imagine you know, a world that not, not create a world from a mental idea of what I want, but channel, receive the inspiration, use the imagination to bring it to life. And then we contribute that into the collective blockchain in a sense through the information field. And then we allow the reality to shift towards the reality we are here to experience. So did that answer all the questions? Um, yes. And I had, first of all, I'm like, I'm going to have to watch the replay because I'm like taking notes. It's amazing. <laughs> really beautiful, <laughs> beautiful answers. Um just practically, are there programs that you use or use with your clients, like to get you into your imagination, to get people into their heart and also, um, for contemplation, is there a program that you love? Mm. Yeah. So like I say, the, and I don't mean to rub this into, to everyone in, in America and I know in Europe you don't, but the eclipse are, are, are amazing. And I know in Europe, they don't come with the Healy, but you can order them from the Healy shop. So if you're in Europe, that's there. Thankfully here in Australia, I think most of Asia, you can order them. They come with your Healy. <clears throat> but the ear clips, the reason I love those is, and even if you have to just use the sticky pads, is the, the, they are running at what we call acute programs, programs for instant results, something that can deal with an issue that you have live action right now. And one of the first things that I just feel is, is important is just to relax our nervous system. And so that's where mental balance acute is, is fantastic. And then also things like concentration acute, you know, any of these kind of programs, acute programs can help our brain kind of break down the inflammation and be more present. Now that aside, um, I often recommend the pure program. Again, just coming back to the simplicity of using that a couple of times a week because it can really help just break down again the inflammation. So much of, of our issues are just inflammation. And when you bring inflammation out of the equation and we can think clearer, there's less fear. We're, we're less susceptible to fear in that sense. The <clears throat> other module that I do love is the, um, the soul cycle. Uh, so Victoria, Victoria is asking, it's the pure program, Victoria, was the one I was mentioning there. So then you have the soul cycle. Soul cycle for me is an amazing module that, you know, I use confidence, self-confidence a lot. And, uh, you know, people say, oh, but you're so confident, et cetera. It's like, yeah, but, you know, every time you get up in front of, you know, many people, it's, it's you know, there's all kinds of things that can go on. And it's, it's like trusting that what's going to come out of my mouth is enough. And ironically, I realized that my work started becoming more and more popular in the world, you know, more successful as such. It started just naturally spreading when I stopped worrying about what I was saying, about how I would be perceived. So a lot of what I find this work in stepping into your own sovereignty, your own empowerment, requires a deep trust that you are enough in your shadow and your gift that you are human. We are all human. We all need to give each other space. <clears throat> and so in that, I highly recommend the soul cycle um, as a support process for that. And um, yeah, and confidence, self-confidence. Thank you. Beautiful. I'm actually buying soul cycle because I didn't have it and everyone is raving about it. So you just definitely reminded me <laughs> <laughs> it's time to get it. So let's have a live scan so we can see actually how you work mm. with, you know, the I Ching and how you would work with a client. It'd be really interesting to see. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so I guess, well, that's the other 
I guess not so much a program um, that I use a lot with Healy and with clients and and myself is the so for those that don't have a Healy that came because of the Gene Keys work then or you know, attracted to the idea with Healy you also have a resonance capacity so it's a, a, an ability to be able to scan your your energetic field your information field and see what's alive in it. And so the way that we, and one of those databases is called the I Ching database. And the gene keys is a modern, in a sense, interpretation of the gene keys, uh, sorry, of the I Ching. And so by scanning the I Ching database, you're able to re- find which gene key is the most relevant to my intention, which is a powerful thing when you're going through a challenge. So it, probably a good point to mention here that the gene keys was used through the Chinese you know, time of empire through, you know, all the emperors would consult their wise men and they would get them to either throw coins or draw straws and try and work out which, which of the 64 hexagrams they're called or symbols was relevant to the issue that their um, empire was going through. So they could learn how to handle the change the most effectively with the philosophy that change is always happening. It's how we deal with the change that makes the difference between suffering and thriving. And so the gene keys and the I Ching database are all about that. So a great way to demonstrate this, um, for ob- obviously with the timing we had and the efficiency, we did the live scan just before we came on. And uh, we would love to invite, um, I believe it was Amanda. Amanda, you were our volunteer. Are you there? Would you like I'm to join here. us? Hi. Hey, Amanda, there you are. Excellent. So you're our volunteer for today and we've done the scan and I've got it here and I'll bring it up in a moment and I'll show you how we can use that scan and how we can use free gene, key, gene keys tools to be able to have a, a way of interpreting it. But before we go into that, Amanda, I wanted to just ask you, what was your intention when we did this scan? And, and actually, before you say it, mm-hmm. this is for everyone. When we say and intention, the reason we the intention is so important when we do a resonance scan with the Healy is when you, Amanda, were holding that intention, whatever that intention was. So, for example, if one was to think, you know, my intention is uh, I want to be wealthy and thriving, then when we hold that intention, what happens in our subconscious is underneath all the things that are getting in the way, all the belief systems and old archaic things that are in our survival mechanisms that are getting in the way of this manifesting begin to come to the surface. I'm sure you've all had this feeling. You know, it's like, oh, I'm going to win the lotto. And the voice inside goes, no, you're not, right? So that's why by holding the intention, it kind of brings the appropriate kind of glitches in our programming to the surface so that the scanner can then pick it up and work out, okay, what is going on in the background? You can run the Healy to then vibrate the frequencies, which helps on one level. And then you can also look at it through the Gene Keys lens to help mentally, consciously also enter it and open that up. So with that being said, Amanda, what was your intention that you were holding during this? My intention was I have clarity in the steps to take and I wake up every day and take aligned action to create the connections and abundance that are coming my way. Mm, Juicy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Beautiful. So now I'm going to bring up the scan here. And so just confirming, Amanda, you're okay. Uh, We won't be getting deep and personal. No, you're good. I'm an open book. You can get deep with me. Fantastic. Fantastic. Always good to check when we have a big audience. (laughs) All right. So I've just brought up the screen share here. And so this was your scan, the results that came up, Amanda, when we, here we go. So this was the results that came up. And for those that have never seen one, this is what the output looks like. You can get your Healy to do a PDF file, which will give you a summary. And when we're looking at these results, so you always focus on, you know, what do I have the greatest resonance now, according to whatever your intention the top result will always be at the top. And so in this case, you got number six. So number six is, it's the sixth hexagram of the I Ching, which it gives you in the Healy, the traditional kind of approach of understanding this. 
The trick with the traditional approach is it can sometimes be a little bit cryptic. And it was meant to be that way because it was part of how people would find their own inner wisdom. The Gene Keys gives a little more generous um, approach to the work that makes it a little bit easier to interpret. So first we have the sixth Gene Key is coming up with 60% in a sense resonance. So accuracy of, you know, the higher the percentage, the more directly it's kind of speaking to you in that sense. And around 60%, 50, 60% is around what you would expect to see here. So we have the sixth Gene Key, the sixth hexagram, but also known as a sixth Gene Key is coming up as a top contemplation for the solution that you're looking for. And then we have at 55%, the 52nd gene key. And then we have again at 55%, the 28th gene key. Now, these three straight away tell me a story. Mm -hmm. And when you get to know the gene keys, you begin to see, ah, there's something going on here. And on top of that, I just want to speak to the synchronicity that you have 55% on both 52 and 28 but you also have the 58th gene key turning up with 54% coming up high. And so the reason I say that is because at, in the heart of the gene keys work is the 55th gene key, which is the shadow pattern of victimization. It is one of the biggest mutations that is currently underway in our, in our collective society. You can see it in the world. The whole theme of being a victim is turning up in reality of what does that mean? How does that, how can we use this energy to be empowering? Where is our freedom in this process? And so just wanted to really voice that there. But what we would do now is say, okay, so considering your intention, let's go have a look on the Gene Keys website at what the sixth Gene Key actually represents. And so this is where I use what's known as the Gene Keys Living Library. And I'll just pop in the chat here the link for everyone. So you can, I've just popped it into the chat there. And so this is genekeys.com slash living dash library. Now, when you go in here, you have the 64 different gene keys, one through to 64. So the top result for you, Amanda, was number six. So you go to number six and you click that. And let me get this open a bit better. And so the first thing you'll get is a quote from Richard Rudd's audio contemplations that's relevant to it. And you will also get the keynotes of the gene key. So it means we're looking at the shadow of conflict, conflict, the gift of diplomacy, and the city of peace. So the sixth gene key is the part in our DNA that deeply connects to the essence of conflict in our reality. And the quote <clears throat> that Richard gives, which is a quote that you could take into contemplation, while running the vibrations and see what comes through is every human being is emotionally vulnerable until we drop our protective defenses. The defenses form around our heart. And as long as our hearts remain defended and closed, they can't heal. Mm. So what this sixth gene key is talking about is where is there conflict in our reality? And it may be externally projected conflict, but it may also be inner conflict that's worried about hurting others outwardly. And so what happens when we're, when we're caught up in, in this pattern of conflict, we are putting up protections around our heart and we're putting up protections because we feel like someone can take something away from us. Mm. And so when you see this sixth gene key, one of the big contemplations is in relation to your intention, what is it that you can fear? What, what is it that you fear that someone will take away from you if you embody your intention. Does that make sense, Amanda? Yeah, that does make sense. So you can see how just by kind of taking that and looking at the beginning part, you can start getting a little bit of a feeling. And you can see also some of the more free, some of the free keynotes. Remember always just to relax. We're using our imagination. It's not about correct answers. Nothing can tell you. I cannot tell you. Amanda, what, what you need to know, because even if I had the absolute perfect answer, it doesn't mean you could hear it mm. because we all hear words through different lenses. And yeah. that's why the gene keys and using the Healy itself is about vibrating the, the, the key, the tuning fork of what it is that you're looking for. 
so that it can vibrate in you and then your mind can discover it through your imagination itself, through the process of contemplation. But these keynotes can help. One of the th patterns you'll see is, here we go. If you see here on Gene Key 6, it's the path to peace. So what we're saying is <clears throat> wherever there is conflict in our lives, in our realities, the, the medicine that can allow us to heal and open that heart back up is what we call the gift of diplomacy. And it's the pathway to the city, the highest nature, the superpower is peace. In order to get peace, peace exists in conflict. Conflict is literally the, the ignition that leads towards a craving for peace. And eventually it gets so uncomfortable that peace will come sooner or later. But it happens through the process of diplomacy. And diplomacy is not the political term that we know it as. And a lot of the Gene Keys work is about redefining and reclaiming the power of our words. And so when we see diplomacy, it's about where can you embody diplomacy more in your, in your world, in your intention, in the way you approach the world. And so when we look at this, diplomacy is about listening to your needs and the other's needs mm -hmm. to feel into what do I like turn up at the, the diplomacy table with an open heart saying, this is what I'm worried about. This is what I need to look after in myself. I'm a bit, bit nervous about losing this. What are, you, what are you worried about losing? Tell me. Tell me about what you are scared of losing and being willing to open and to hear where they're coming from. You know, it's like we see, in fact, one of the greatest examples of this sixth gene key that is related to, in a sense, your, your contemplation, Amanda, it reminds me of this story. It was, um, I remember hearing of, of an African-American man who, you know, he took on the Ku Klux Klan, one of the most intense and I would say terrifying places for a man of color to turn up. Mm -hmm. But everyone was getting angry at the Ku Klux Klan, shaming them, yelling all these things at them. But all it did was push them into their group even deeper, push them underground and become insidious. Then this African-American man, the, the, the very victim of the target of their hatred, went out of his way to start finding ways to, to meet with these members and to listen with an open heart. Mm. And what he began to hear was the pain that were in these men and women, but largely men. And when he started hearing that pain, what also began happening was they began actually feeling heard and seen. And then a strange thing happened. For the first time ever, they began to see a colored man as a human being. They started seeing his heart and they started realizing, hang on, you're a nice person. And they, they felt love for the very thing they had hatred for. But in order to do it, someone has to put their swords down. Mm. Someone has to be willing to say, I'm scared, but... I want to engage in diplomacy, heart-centered diplomacy to find our way through. How can I honor my needs for my intention, to thrive in my intention, while also honoring the needs of the collective and the needs around me and not compromising? Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And so how does that land with your intention? Um. I definitely have some contemplation to do with it, but when it comes to conflict, I mean, I immediately, the first thing that I thought of is just the inner conflict within myself. It's definitely not outward. It's completely inward. And then when you shared the story um, with diplomacy, just stepping more into, you know, one of the things that I had in my intention was about connections and more connections. And the best thing to do with connections is to stop and listen and help them to feel heard and seen. So all of that mm. just kind of instigated some really good stuff inside of me. Mm. Well, Amanda, I'm glad that, that you just shared that because you kind of just keynoted the next two gene keys that turned up mm. that are related to your intention because we've talked about the sixth as an example of the top one that you can use. But it also came up with a 52. 
I mean, right there, keeping still. The 52nd mm-hmm. is about the gift of restraint. It's about the beauty of, of holding still and allowing life to happen without stressing it out. It's the shadow of stress. Letting go of the stress and holding space and being present. That allows things to come to the surface. It allows the noise to settle so we can get clarity. And then the 28, it gives the notes here overburden and excess, but the 28 in the gene keys is all about purpose. It's about the shadow of purposelessness, not knowing what's the point, why am I here, what am I doing, and really trusting in the deeper meaning of it all, finding meaning and purpose in the challenge. And it's what changes the world from feeling like a victim of what's happening to realizing, hang on, this is, this is an epic game, a challenge, okay? If this was a board game, I wouldn't be crying. I would be sitting here going, okay, what move do I play next? Well, mm-hmm. keeping still. Okay, maybe I'll try that. You know, yeah, that's so good. And it is interesting because Jen scanned me for this. And I have, for the past couple of weeks, I have been working with the I Ching and the Gene Keys book. So all of this is really synchronistic. And 28 keeps coming up in my scan. So the fact that it came up on the one she did on me too is okay. Mm. Yeah. Like you say, man, you'll notice some will just keep coming. And when they do, that's a good one to notice. And look, if you if you have the Gene Keys book, another great resource is the, for those who haven't seen them, the Wisdom Keeper Oracle Cards. Mm-hmm. It's a dear friend of mine, Rosie Aronson, who is, as far as integrity, I've never met a human being. This woman is one of the most integral humans I've ever met with the most authentic open hearts. And she has created an incredible deck. So that's also a great resource to go with the healing um, for references. So then you would go to the twenty eight and continue your contemplations while using the Healy with it. Beautiful. Well, thanks, thank, Amanda. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amanda, for opening up. And you have the most gorgeous, like, ocean eyes ever. Oh, thank so you. Pretty. They're so just bright. Um. So, okay, this has been incredibly fun. I want to make sure that we, and meaningful and deep, this, is, this has been very soulful, Um. I feel. This has been a soulful experience tonight for me. Uh, at least, and I'm sure many, many others um, here, but we have a few minutes left and we probably will go over a few, but I just wanted to say in case you have to hop off right on the dot. So please make sure if if you've enjoyed Mark's energy as much as I have, and I'm I'm sure so many of us here, um, all of us here, please make sure to hop on over to, if you're on Instagram, to his um, Instagram account, which is at Mark, we'll, we'll drop it in the um, in the chat, just so you can stay connected. He's always sharing such profound and just authentic human moments. And, um, he's very inspiring. So make sure to hop over there. And at the end of this call, he will be sharing, uh, you know, what's happening in his world. Um, and also, you know, any offerings he has. So now we're going to hop on over to questions. And I believe our first question for you, Mark is, where did it go? Hold on. Okay. Okay. Here it is. Okay. So Victoria asks, and I think we need to spotlight our, is Mark, Mark, you're muted. So maybe just unmuting yourself so you can come back when you talk, but it says, um, uh, Victoria says, would love to know Mark's HD energy type profile and authority. And we have, we have Mm -hmm. a couple more questions after that. So just making sure that we, yeah. And if you have questions, please drop them in the chat box. Yes. So that question again is, what is your HD energy type profile and authority? Absolutely. We'll we'll get intimate. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So for those that know human design, I'm a 5-1 profile, uh, self-projected projector. um, So G center projector. And yeah, which is self-projected authority. So G center authority. So I hope that answers that one for you. Beautiful. Great question. Love that question. Um, So being asked questions is actually really good for you, right? As a projector, is that right? Yes. That's what I'm Uh, I'm doing tomorrow here. (laughs) Absolutely. And this is literally like, I realized in my life, I went through all these things, but my my happy place is to come on podcasts, come on webinars, ask me all the questions you like. Yeah. Love it. Oh, thank you. Uh, And then Paige asks, can you share more about the 55th gene key 
and how to best move through it as a collective, which, wow, you really, that was very profound when you mentioned um, how the collective is working through the the 55th key. Uh, I hadn't thought about yeah. it that way. So thank you. Yes. Yeah. Paige's question. Yeah. And, and it's, it is a great question, Paige. And I mean, in a sense, it's what all of this session has been about is, and what everything is about uh, with, with this work is how do we move our humanity out of this field of victimization into the place of creative liberation? you know, as creators. And part of the way I see this from a kind of engineering technical sense from the outside is when consciousness, in order for consciousness, our higher self to be able to come in and experience this reality, we needed first to grow the kind of vegetable bodies. You know, we had to grow these human forms out of the earth particles in a sense. And so over this many, many millennia, we have been evolving the human form to get it to where it is. And in order to get through the early stages, we needed to have the shadow frequencies. Greed helped us keep moving and growing these bodies, not our consciousness. The, the shadow of victimization helped us to always be ready in a very dangerous world and stay alive. You know, we either play dead or we, we run, fight, flight, et cetera. That's, a, that's the victimization patterns. We try and find a way to, to survive. But we are now at a time in our reality where we no longer need to be driven by fear frequencies. These vessels, these human vessels have arrived to a point where we are able to open up the bandwidth of our consciousness and allow our higher self to start expressing in its fuller form. And so what we're seeing in the collective is a kind of collective urging of these old victim beliefs. And it's a tricky conversation to have because it can sound like it's saying, oh, you know, stop making such a big deal about, you know, something or other of this, but no, our, our reality is painful when we take it, when we are so deeply in that victim world, it feels very real. And the Gene Keys work is not about bypassing, you know, the feelings of this, you know, the, the pain of, of and, and the victim consciousness. It's about actually allowing it in. It's about allowing our shadows so that we can actually get to know them. And when we get to know our shadows, we can then start questioning, is it real? Or am I overreacting right now? Am I in, a, in an old pattern? And so it's through self-awareness. To me, self-awareness is the mechanism of our form that allows us to evolve our capacity to let God in, in a sense, to let ourselves in, our higher self, to come through. And so in that sense, when you say how to best move through it as a collective, it's to feel and to be real and to be authentic not to try and be something that is correct and to take the pressure off ourselves, to remember that we are human, all of us, that even the most, the biggest, pardon my expression, the biggest asshole out there in the world, you know, they're like that for a reason. It's, 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 I see it as mathematics. Like I could literally, like when I, when I come up against these characters, I can almost laser through and see their trauma. I can see their suffering. I can see their parents suffering, their parents' parents suffering. And we can sit and try and pin the blame on who is the biggest perpetrator, who is the biggest creator of this, but then we have to go back and blame their parents and their environment. And then we have to blame their parents' parents. And we have to go all the way back, and then who do we actually blame? And what we begin to see is that even the most ugliest of sins, the ugliest of, of, of perpetrators, are the byproduct of these forms trying to find their way into where we're going in this place. And they are really a byproduct of the fear frequency being pushed out onto the world and reaction in really horrible, yucky ways. And so we can't fix it through legislation. We can't fix it through brute force. And just like we shared about that story of the African-American fella who, who was able to spend time with the Ku Klux Klan. I mean, that is, that's wild to even consider. Like, I'm not suggesting we should all do that. That's an extreme example but it's about how can we reimagine a world where these people are healed rather than killed, healed rather than punished. And we can start opening our heart to the concept of miracles that maybe even the person, the family member that just shits me to tears, pardon my expression, that just really, you know, there's no way they're going to. What if they did? What if through acceptance and, and deep listening and that sixth gene key of diplomacy, 
we're able to truly allow space. And in order to do that, we need healthy boundaries. We need to make sure we're looking after ourselves, not to sacrifice ourselves on the altar of this, this freedom concept, but to truly honor who we are. And I, again, I come at it from business concepts and I like to think of it as instead of boundaries, which sound very much like stay out, but rather terms of engagement. You know, it's a business thing. When you, you know, if we're going to do something, usually you write a contract to make sure that everyone is clear. This is what I need. What do you need? Okay, cool. I agree on that. Do you agree? Yep, yeah, we agree. Great. We know our terms of engagement. We know our boundaries. If one person oversteps it, it's not personal. We just say, hey, look at the contract. We talked about this. And in a way, that to me is one of the real skills that I feel we need to cultivate as a collective because we need to be able to engage and give space for everyone else to have their mistakes, their shadows. Just because we're in our gift today doesn't mean the rest of the world will be. And the real art form is when I can say, hey, yeah, you're allowed to have your victimization. You're allowed to have that, but don't step, don't step over this line. This is my line. And then if it does, then, okay, I take care of myself and I, I pull away from this and allow you to be in your space. So it's a tricky one in that sense. There is no direct answer, but it is the deepest question. And I think it really is through presence and breathing deep. Thank you. Thank you for answering that. And gosh, the the Healy, one of the things that I know it's done for so many people who um, who I've connected with around the Healy or had it, somebody or had them purchase the Healy through me is that awareness that like when you go out to the grocery store, you're seeing people differently. You're you're seeing that we're all connected. You're reacting differently. It's it's beautiful. And to be able to I mean, it's just such a great gift. Um, to come back to who we are and what we need and, um, and, and maintaining our, our own inner love. Um, that's the greatest thing we can, we can give. So thank you for that. What, a, what a, an amazing question. And then we have Megan who asked, what is the best way for a beginner to start using the, this gene key information? And maybe it's to have a session with you, which I don't even know, Mark, do you, do you do one-on-one -on -one sessions or? You yes. Reading? Okay. And, and yeah. Yes. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Go right ahead. Ab absolutely. So I do one-on-one -on -one sessions <clears throat> and they are, I mean, one-on-one -on -one sessions that I do, I, I let people know I'm not a coach, you know, in, in that sense that I'm more of a, these days I kind of like to say, you know, more like the Gandalf in your hero's journey, you know, that, that you're on a mission, you're on an adventure and I'm the one that will turn up when you need me when you're coming up against challenges or you want to go deeper and the sessions are always very mystical. Like they can be, well, they can be very practical sometimes because I also have a, a project manager's brain, but at the same time, they can also be deeply mysterious in the way they work and more like a channeling or like, um, you know, even psyche. I never claim to be psyche, but that even comes through at times. So they're really, whatever the client needs is what I become for that session, but it's all about you finding your own connection in the end. And, but when it comes to the best way to start and Megan, big shout out, Megan's actually from Perth in Western Australia. So an amazing human and uh, one of my Healy team. So it's a great question. And I've shared in the chat, the link to get your free profile. And when you, that's probably the first place to start with this work is click that link and get your free profile on the Gene Keys website. And at the top of the Gene Keys website, which I will quickly show here on a screen share, you will see new to the Gene Keys, try this free mini course. So very recently, actually in the last six months, Gene Keys Publishing has released this course and it's very, it's free. You come on, you get your profile by putting in your data here, and then you can go start that course. That course will give you a taster of what the work's all about, how it works, et cetera, and get a feel for the resonance of it and set you up on, on getting started. And then I saw as well, answering a similar question at the bottom here, um, uh, is that from Rewilding from Holly? Do you teach the gene keys? So this is in that text of things. The Gene Keys is a body of teaching that we encourage self-guidance in, like to do the online courses. There's amazing resources. There's different sequences to take you through the process. 
But what we do are things called virtual retreats. They're like deep dives into the work where we do it as a collective. And right now we're in the second month of a four month process called the activation sequence. And so that is um, the closest you'll get to a teaching as such. It's more a facilitation of the process. And we do offer things like for inspiration and, you know, bring through the transmission and help people with getting their heads around it. Because one of the biggest challenges when you're new to the work is letting go of the old mindset of how you think it, it should be and what it means, you know, and, and really moving into a more creative, liberating, you know, sovereign process with it. So I hope that gave a bit of an answer there. Oh, excellent answer. And then just um, two other questions that are coming through. One is, could you please reiterate the name of the book behind you? I guess may maybe just say both of the names, just in case. We've got the Gene Absolutely. Key. So this is the Gene Keys. It's it's a collector's edition. People often write to me afterwards going, hang on, I haven't seen that version before. There was only a hundred of these ever done. And so sadly, there are no more available in it unless you find them secondhand. And uh, Richard put a little, uh, if you can see it there, but he put a little um, sentence in each one handwritten in this gold ink. And I'll read that for you all here. The words of life are always perfect just for you. Accept then each word and merge with the word of God. Richard Rudd. So that's the Gene Keys. Gene Keys. And then the other, the other little and book. The right, other the one book was book. The, wisdom, the Wisdom Keepers Wednesday. Oracle Deck. Yeah. And then what did you call God again? You called it, you like used it as an, what did you call it? The Galactic that? Ordering Dynamic. Dynamic. The Galactic Order... Ordering, ordering dynamic. dynamic. Okay. Yeah. I had never heard it's, that before. <laughs> it always just feels like a nice kind of, like I said, I'm, I'm a big fan yes. of dog, dogma free ways of going in the world. No belief needed. It's just whatever it is, it's ordering things on a galactic level. And that's really what an ordering dynamic is. So whatever it is. Yeah. I'm going to use that. Um, thank you. <laughs> and then the last question that I see at the moment is, how do you do contemplation? And this is coming from Meta. Mm. Hey, Meta, great to connect again. Um, so contemplation is, it's one of those things that's mysteriously simple. You know, it, it's the way that I often think of contemplation is it's really about holding things lightly in our awareness while we move about life. So it's it's the Gene Key's work in contemplation is not about, you know, it, it's like creating some time. So maybe you have like one hour a week where you look at your profile, you look at a gene key and a, and a sphere and you, you think about, okay, what is this? I'm going to look at my life's work this week. What gene key do I have? So for example, I have the seven, the shadow of division, the gift of guidance and the city of virtue and the keynote of fixer. So I've got these little keynotes that I've got and I might read the chapter, get a feeling for what it means. And then I put all the books aside and I go to life and I do the dishes. I, I do the family thing. I do the work thing. I do my sessions. But during the whole time, I keep hovering around this idea of guidance, of this sixth gene key, of the themes that I've just read. You know, for example, I'm a fifth line life's work, which has the keynote of fixer. And so I might just keep in mind like, okay, where am I trying to fix you know, in the world? Where, where maybe can I just relax? Where am I causing division through the way I'm trying to interfere when maybe it doesn't need to be fixed just yet? And maybe I take that and look at that with my son. Okay, is there, is there actually something wrong here? Like, am I causing division by interfering or am I actually supporting and guiding him with my virtue right now? Like, where am I at with this? And then, you know, I'll be at traffic lights when I'm driving somewhere, I'll stop and maybe I'll just sit and Maybe I'm feeling frustrated with something or I was like, oh, I should be there by now. And I'll stop and go, what is that feeling? Where is that in my body? And just kind of use those opportunities where, you know, we can feel stuck to actually then turn it around and become curious. And curiosity to me is the key word for contemplation. It's about being curious and using the gene keys as almost like, in fact, the, the analogy that I love meta is, it's like, imagine your life is a cauldron and in the cauldron, there's this bubbling mix alchemically processing inside there. 
And that is all of your life experience, right? Your traumas, your joys, your experiences, that's your moment. That's your here and now in your body. It's all kind of bubbling away. And some of it, you, you know, we're not sure what's what. And so the gene keys are like the spices that you add to the cauldron, to the soup that brings out the flavors. You know how we can put a little bit of salt, a little bit of sugar. It can really bring the flavors to the surface so you can actually taste them more. And so in a way, that's kind of what the gene keys are. They help bring the flavors of our life to the surface so we can become more aware. So contemplation is a practice that takes time. And the first step is about pausing, just making space for it. And there's a whole course as well, Jessica, for the art of contemplation on the gene keys. I think it's like 50 US dollars or something, but it's literally dedicated to cultivating it. And there's a small book called The Art of Contemplation that Richard wrote. And he said, if you understand this little book, it's less than 100 pages. He said, throw away the big book. And I know Beck, another one of my crew here in, in Perth and, and dear friends is here. And she often says, ah, oh. so, and it's like, yeah, the big book is incredible. It's amazing. But really, it's all a party trick to bring us back to the essence of self-awareness through the process of contemplation. Oh, I'm so glad Meta asked that question. That was just very helpful. And um, and I know we're going over, if you need to hop off, please hop, like just, you can go and do that. Um, we're just so happy you came for the time that you were able to be here. We do have another question and I think it's a fantastic question. And um, and again, I just wanna reiterate that Mark's Instagram handle is Mark Bentley at Mark Bentley 199. It's down in the corner of his name where he speaks in case you have to hop off and you wanna connect with him. I'm all about connections and <laughs> just making people, make sure, making sure that people are visible and people are seen because Mark needs to be on like a world stage speaking to everyone. Um, but this is an excellent question. And it says, can you say more? This is coming from rewilding Holly Copeland. It says, can you say more about the origin of the I Ching or of I Ching and relationship to our DNA and connection to nature slash earth? Mm. That That's a juicy one. So, you know, they say it's, there's enlightenment always comes down to the right questions, not the answers. You know, and, and the beautiful thing that a good question can open up such a powerful contemplation. And so, I mean, can you say more about the origin of the I Ching. For me, what that really boils down to is that we are not separate. Like our, our physical bodies, in a way, I was talking about this with my brother yesterday, that we were contemplating this idea that our bodies have a storyline and our higher self is another storyline. So for example, you have your higher self that is going through lifetimes, et cetera, et cetera. But no matter what the history of your higher self, when you land and incarnate into a physical vessel, a body, my DNA has the lineage of my mother and father's bloodline, irrelevant of my higher self's lineage in that sense. And so when we drop into that, our DNA carries the storyline of our entire history, what they call junk DNA. Our DNA is basically the radio antenna to the information field, the database and the information field that holds the entire history and future of this genetic lineage in a sense. And really we're coming in as these conscious beings living in an interactive movie that kind of is already written in a way, but it's a kind of choose your own adventure story. And so in that sense, you know, when we, when people talk about humans destroying the planet, I, I, I find that a deep contemplation of its own to have because humans are not separate and never have been these vessels. These vessels are made from Pachamama. They're made from nature. They're made from earth. That our, our cells come from the earth material. And in that sense, you know, we are guardians. We are, you know, creators that are born from earth. The earth herself has helped evolve us into being. So there's nothing broken about what we're doing, the industrial revolution, et cetera. It all get, it got a bit out of hand, but that's evolution. It gets out of hand 
and then it finds solutions and it self-corrects through self-awareness. And so the I Ching for me is about helping this thing that has been born from the earth for a purpose to bring us to these next stages, the planet to the next stages. It, the I Ching was in a sense the, the counterbalance to the shadow nature to provide a framework to support us to come back to our natural essence. And the more that we are in our gift frequency, the more that we naturally can feel and hear earth. And to me, that's what synchronicity is. It's the language of the, of, of time ship earth of this breathing mother that we're on and spirit herself. It's synchronicity. You know, it's, it's like this saying that, when we pray, we're reaching out to God. And when we experience synchronicity, that's the gods reaching back to us. And in that sense, the I Ching is like a secret hidden um, manual to the human experience that we're only really just discovering now in the last 30 years. And it helps support opening our hearts so that we can cultivate a deeper remembering of our connection to the earth. So I hope that answered it. Yes, it, it mm. did. Um, oh, I could, I could say so many more things and I'm sure we could sit here all night, all morning for you, asking you to just share your spirit with us, share your wisdom, share your gifts. And I, mm. I cannot thank you enough for being here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And with that, before I wanna do one little thing before we go. Um, but I wanted you to be able to share anything you have on the horizon. Do you have anything that is coming up or yeah, that would, you know, how people can connect with you, please. Beautiful. Well, thank you, Jessica. And I really appreciate, you know, you've got such a, a kind heart and considerate energy, you know, so aware for, for, for everyone and, and the way you connect. So thank you so much for really making me feel loved and welcome. And to all of you, that have been tuning in and, and in the process, it's, it's one of these things, even though we're digital, it's, it's alive and then we can feel you, you know? And uh, as far as what's coming, this is the year that I am bringing, I mean, as you say, Jessica, that I'm finally bringing myself to a bigger stage in, I've been self-sabotaging that for many years as a fifth line, worrying about the projection field and, and worried what people will think. Cause I know I don't always have the most traditional ways of speaking about things. And, uh, but the time has come to put that aside. And so at the moment we're doing the virtual retreat. So um, I work with Richard Rudd and the Gene Keys team to bring these retreats to the world through facilitating those. Uh, there will be more retreats coming. Probably the best place to go is my new website, which is still in development. So there may be some bugs and glitches, but if you go to markbentley.com.au, you will see where a general overview of my sessions, where to book me if you want to do a session. Um, there's, but what I would recommend is at the bottom of that website, you will see a sign up to my newsletter. Now I'm going to be launching a new newsletter soon, which is going to be a lot more fancy, nice branding and, and a way to get the work out there. So if you sign up to that newsletter, I will always be letting you know what um, opportunities for courses, workshops, that kind of thing are coming up. Like even like today, I put a newsletter out letting people know that I'd be here today with you all. Thank you. And did you put your website in the... Can you drop that in the chat box? That would be so helpful. Absolutely. Oh, there we go. Okay. Thank you. Jennifer's already got it. Nice Thanks. one. Thanks, Jennifer. Right. Superstar. And is there anything else you want to say, share before we, before I do this one little thing? All or right. Jen, anything else? To, to close oh, up on my end, I, I would just love to say, you know, thank you to all of you that are willing to turn up in life. To, to, to be you and to dare to question and to dare to question what it could mean. And my joy is to inspire people to really come back to that innocence of a child, not the ignorance, the innocence of a child, and to remember that this does not need to be serious, that life is sacred, not serious, and that if we can come into this with joy in our hearts and laughter and learn to laugh at our own shame and to move through it and not take it so serious that we can actually begin to have a hell of a time together mm -hmm. and so much fun. And I'm all for that. So looking forward to co-creating with you all. Thanks again for Absolutely. having me. Oh my gosh. Thank you for that. I have a little Abraham um, Hicks keychain. 
it's the only keychain I have on my keys. Uh, and it says life is supposed to be fun. And I just love, I love that little reminder as I walk out the door, I'm like, life is supposed to be fun. Yes. So in honor of that, let's just all for one moment, if you're comfortable with this, just close your eyes and take one hand over your heart, one hand over your, your stomach, belly, your womb, if you have a womb and Let's just take three deep breaths in and out through our nose, noses. Really honoring who we are and celebrating who we are individually. And, and really sinking into our gifts, the freedom of our gifts. So just breathing in and out. In and out, rooting down into the earth, up, opening up to the sky above, and then just letting those roots and tethers of, of remembering who we are seep back into our vessels. One more breath, in and out. And then bring your hands together and rub them together putting anything you want to put here in your hands, whether it's an intention for humanity or appreciation for this space, appreciation for the people who are here right now, the people who are listening to the replay, maybe it's a blessing. And then open your hands and take a breath in and then send it out into the space together with your breath. And then placing your hands wherever they need to go on your body right now. welcoming in all of the miracles that are your divine birthrights. And when you're ready, opening your eyes. Thank you so much for being here. Sending you all of our love. Enjoy your Heelys. Enjoy the I Ching. Oh, and if you don't have a Healy, make sure to check in with the person who, who sent you here, who connected you here, and the I Ching. And thank you, Mark. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Krista, for being here and Amanda and all of our loves, love, all of our loves, all of our love, all of our blessings. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your evening, day, week. Bye. Thank you.